All right, so now we're talking about color contrast. In the last video, we talked about tonal contrast and just contrast in general, right? So contrast is basically difference in your image, any kind of difference. It could be difference in tones, which would be tonal contrast, or it could be difference in colors, which would be color contrast. So um, color contrast is basically when you have different types of colors in your image, right? If you have an image where you have the sky and the ocean, and both of them look blue, then you don't have a lot of color contrast in your image. It's almost everything is blue. But if you have a desert in the foreground and the blue sky on top of it, now that would be a lot of difference in the colors, right? The desert would be almost orange, the sands of the desert. And then the sky is completely blue, which is a totally different color. So that would be an image with a really big color contrast. Color contrast is a sort of thing that you subconsciously just understand. When you look at an image, you can just tell that this one doesn't have a lot of color contrast or this one has a lot of color contrast. So uh, let's just look at a few examples here. And it, it, it's pretty obvious uh, when you look at an image um, that is pretty um, high in color contrast. Now, um, as we saw in the earlier video, contrast is such an important thing because it can be used by photographers to attract the viewer's attention to the things in the image that they want the viewer to look at. And they can also use contrast to hide the things in the image that they don't want the viewer to look at. In this image, for example, we have the bright blue sky and then we have a flower here. Now, if this flower was a similar color, like for example, if it was a teal blue flower, it wouldn't be so, it wouldn't stand out so much as it is doing right now because yellow and blue are pretty different colors. Now, what do I mean by different colors? Which colors are different from each other? People kind of study colors for a long time. There are people who do this as their full-time job. They are like colorists on movies. They do color corrections. They do color grading. Now, this is a whole field in itself. But the fundamentals are pretty easy to understand. Let's look at another image here. Now, as soon as you look at this, you can say that this has really, really high color contrast. You can see bright blues, and then you can see completely contrasting colors in these orange and yellow and green kind of uh, hills and uh, houses here. Here's another high contrast image where you have these yellows and then you have these purples and greens. As soon as you look at this, you can say that it has a high contrast because these colors are kind of complementary to each other. Now, let's look at a few low color contrast images. So just looking at this, it's pretty obvious that all the colors in this image are kind of similar to each other and nothing is really standing out. And that's the kind of look that the photographer is going for here. Now this one here is also pretty low in color contrast. You can see that the sky is um, it is looking like a bright sunny day, but the sky has been desaturated and so have these, um, you know, the foreground. It has also been desaturated. So you can see that the color contrast has been reduced due to the uh, reduction in the saturation here. The same thing is going on here, right? You have all these dulled colors. So having said that, what exactly does color, what exactly does complementary colors mean? I mean, I said that you can look at the, or you can look at a yellow flower in the bright blue sky and say that the, it is pretty contrasting, but how do you decide which colors are contrasting? How do you know which color to use so that your subject is going to stand out or it's going to blend in with the background? Well, all you actually have to know is that there's something called the color wheel, which helps you understand which colors are opposites of each other. And the colors on the opposite ends of this wheel are complementary colors. So they're going to stand out against each other a lot. Now, this is our color wheel here. If you have something like blue, and you use something on the other end of the color wheel, like yellow. Now that is going to really bring out the contrast in your image, right? So you can see that blue and yellow are uh, on the other side, uh, on the opposite ends of the color wheel, which is why when we saw earlier, the image of the yellow flower in the blue sky seemed so high in contrast, right? So these are not the only two colors you can use to contrast with each other, right? There are all of these colors on the opposite ends of each other that you can use in your photos to make it look better, to make the contrast higher and to make objects stand out. Now, uh, another thing to notice here is that these colors here are actually warmer than the colors here, which are kind of cooler, right? So you could just use warm colors for the background and then cool colors for your foreground or vice versa, you could make your subject in your images stand out more just by using colors on the opposite ends of the color wheel. Now, having said that, let's go back to Photoshop and look at some examples, right? So here is an image that I clicked recently in uh, Point Trees. And um, so what you can see here is that I'm using oranges and blues, right? So um, they're on the opposite ends. So I have blues here and I'm using orange here. 
so they are on the opposite end so it's pretty pretty um, high in contrast and as you can see from the image it's working quite well with all these orange regions here contrasting well against all the blue regions here so you can see that things are really standing out especially the especially the ship here the wrecked ship here it's really really standing out from everything else right it's standing out from the sky here it looks like i want to attract your attention to this and that's right but there's a problem with this image the problem is that my subject is actually wearing blue and he's not standing out when you look at the sky behind him he's standing in front of the sky but the sky and his clothes are almost the same color and it's not really working for me right now the interesting thing is that completely by coincidence we had another friend with us that day who was dressed in colors that was completely on the opposite side of blue which is orange and here you go this is the image and you can see how different this image looks from the first one right you can see how much more my subject is standing out here just because he's wearing orange i didn't change anything on my camera except the subject you can see how much more he's standing out just because of the color of his clothes being different from the color of the sky and that is how color contrast can really affect your image this this guy here is now attracting so much more attention now let's look at this photograph here so this is me uh, leaning against uh, uh, some blue light here and the thing here is that you can see that the the reason why this works is because this light here it's kind of cool right so if you look at the so if you look at the color wheel all of that stuff is actually on this side of it right it looks kind of bluish purple kind of light now since this light is kind of purple bluish cool light and my skin on the other hand is completely on the other side of the spectrum which is you know orange brownish color it kind of contrasts well so the light is about on this side here bluish purple whereas skin colors are somewhere here right this is this is where skin color comes and my skin color is about somewhere here i guess so so that's why the subject is able to stand out in this image in spite of being um you know so close to such bright lighting there is a color difference between the light and the subject and it's almost on the opposite sides of the spectrum so that's why it's kind of easier to notice it and attract the attention to the face of the subject of course there are other things like focus depth of field all that stuff but color contrast is playing an important role in this image now let's look at the final image here so this was the image that we looked at in the last video where um we were looking at tonal contrast and i took this image and just added a little bit of uh contrast by um increasing the brightness of the center section so this was before and this is after and we looked at how this kind of separated the center of the image the ship from the rest of the image right now let's also try to change the color contrast in this image a little bit and see if that will help to separate out our subject a little more from the background and also help to attract the viewer's attention more towards the subject right so we'll keep the tonal contrast changes that we made but we're also going to add another layer here where i'm going to shift the color of this image towards orange and then i'm going to add another layer where i'm going to shift the color of this image towards blue so i have this orangish layer and i have this bluish layer and what i'm going to do is i'm going to make the orangish layer only visible near the ship whereas i'm going to make the blue layer visible everywhere else there you go now take a look at that So this was before this was actually the original image this was with the tonal contrast this is after the color contrast so you can see how much of a difference it's making just by modifying the contrast a little bit it's attracting the viewer's attention so much more now than it was before this is why color contrast and just contrast in general itself is such a powerful tool now that we know what color contrast is and how you can use complementary colors to um attract the viewer's attention let's look at how it's done in movies So this here is an Instagram account called color palette dot cinema. It's a really cool Instagram account because it basically gives you the color palette of different movies, right? So you can see what kind of color palettes are used in different movies. And as you can see here, most of the movies generally just use almost just two colors, two different types of colors. And what they use this for is to separate the subject from whatever else is in the image. So in this case as you can see here, the two colors that they're using are being used to separate the skin of the subject from whatever the background is there so as you can see most of these use 
two different colors. This one here is the classic orange and teal image. So uh, movies generally use orange and teal where, you know, orange is kind of like similar to the skin tones. And then the rest of the image is teal. So they use teal for the background because it's on the other side of the color wheel. They used to use it a lot uh, like a decade ago. Now they're kind of uh, moving away from it, but you can still see it in a lot of movies. So you can see most of these are just two colors. In fact, almost all of them are two colors. You can see orange and teal appearing. Here is another orange and teal. Also a whole bunch of other different kinds of colors, right? Here is a classic orange and teal, if you can see there. So this, this section is all teal here, whereas the skin, this one is pretty much orange. As you can see, all of these images use color contrast heavily to separate the subject, right? Here you go, another one, orange and teal. So this is a great account to follow on Instagram. And there's also another one called Film Color, which also does the same thing. And you can see here also that most of the movies use kind of like two colors to separate out the foreground and the background. And this should now really give you an idea of why color tones are so important and how, and how color contrast can be used by photographers and filmmakers to show you something in their image that they want you to look at.